hello. Um, my name's Oli Uxler. I'm a lead software engineer at Benevolent AI. And today I'm going to talk to you about our work on covering possible treatments for the COVID-19 COVID pandemic using the Benevolent AI knowledge graph. And so I'd like to tell you a story um, to rewind a little bit back uh, to the beginning of January 2020, a new decade, uh, as it were, full of hopes and dreams. Uh, and I'd like to tell you about um, how we started it and the kind of thing that we do uh, at Benevolent. Um, so what we do is we discover drugs using a mixture uh, of big data, machine learning, and scientific expertise. Uh, we work um, on a range of diseases uh, that have poor treatment options right now, neurodegenerative diseases, uh, rare cancers, uh, and others as well. Um, and we exist as a company uh, because that process is really difficult. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what that means. So the process of discovering new drugs uh, is a very difficult one. It takes a process where you need to understand the underlying causes uh, of a disease. Uh, you need to experiment considerably in order to understand whether those causes uh, are justified. You need to develop a suitable treatment, a suitable molecule that can be used for that treatment. And then you need to take that uh, molecule through a long process of clinical testing. And that process is slow, it's expensive, uh, and it's daunting. The cost on average to develop a new drug is upwards of two and a half billion dollars. Uh, and fewer than one in 10 uh, drugs make it all the way through the clinical testing pipeline. And so we exist as a company in order to uh, make that process faster so that we can get more treatments out to patients. And so the approach that we take at Benevolent is that we start uh, with the data, uh, which we compose into a knowledge graph uh, and AI models, which help to build that knowledge graph and they come up with uh, inferences, predictions, and new ideas based on the data inside it. And I'll show you a little bit more about what that looks like in a minute. And we pair the data and the tools and the creation of the data and tools uh, with our world leading scientists who work together with us uh, to make and test novel hypotheses about diseases and then go on, uh, in some cases, to develop new drugs and take them uh, as far as clinical testing. And so we had all of this in mind, and this is stuff that is progressing right now. But I can also rewind and tell you about the interruption that we all know about uh, that started uh, at the beginning of January 2020. Um, so here's a picture um, that we became familiar with at the turn of the year. Um, this is an area a few hours drive away from Wuhan. And the blue sign in there is talking about the attack of this new virus. Uh, and there are some instructions there. Please wash your hands. Please stay home. Please don't socialize. Please don't go out to eat uh, in restaurants. And even though this started out in China, as we know, uh, very soon uh, messages like this were uh, being translated and followed in languages all around the world, in Italian, in French, in Spanish, and in English. But while it was still in China, um, our CEO rang up and asked, is there anything that we can do to the poor people who are afflicted by this disease? Is there anything that we have in our knowledge graph that could help? And I can tell you a little bit more about what our knowledge graph is. So it's a collection of millions of entities and hundreds of millions of relationships uh, that we have gathered from literature and other sources uh, and processed through um, on the AWS platform. It's composed of diseases, of drugs, of proteins and genes, uh, of processes, clinical trials, and all of the different entities that are important for drug discovery. And we can rebuild that graph from scratch um, every few weeks in order to get the latest data from around the world. And we can do that thanks to uh, the power of cloud computing. Um, and you can see here, uh, the graph on the screen uh, is uh, specialized towards uh, the coronavirus uh, and virology. And we're able to rebuild our graph uh, and tailor it towards different diseases in different areas, uh, thanks to our use of cloud computing and the ability to spin up new environments and new instances without jeopardizing what we're doing already. But the question is, we have a database that's designed for our business model, which is to create new treatments for existing diseases. But the coronavirus is a novel disease. And so how do you find existing treatments for a disease that doesn't have any literature or scientific 
information about it yet. And so this is where it's really important to be able to work with our scientists um, who created the data, who understand the data and the tools. And they were able to find answers to that by making modifications to the question itself. So they asked less about the new disease that wasn't known about and more about the processes of that disease, which are known about. And you can see here, um, Dr. Peter Richardson, our VP of Pharmacology at Benevolent, and he went through the tools uh, and he did some work uh, in order to see whether our knowledge graph, in fact, held any potential treatments that would be able to help us out in that time between now and when the vaccine uh, for coronavirus is finalized, which as I discussed at the beginning, is a process that can take a long time, potentially. And what he did uh, was he was able to identify um, a number of compounds uh, in our knowledge graph that seemed to have uh, some useful effects um, on the coronavirus. And one stood out in particular. I can go through this diagram with you and show the means by which uh, the coronavirus and other viruses enter uh, cells and reproduce. Uh, the virus will uh, come up in contact with the cell membrane and it will be ingested into the cell through a process of called endocytosis. And once inside the cell, it can use the cell's own machinery to replicate itself and then uh, continue its uh, growth and infection. And it particularly infects cells in the alveolar lung, uh, which gives rise to the pneumonia. And Peter found uh, a drug called baricitinib, um, which inhibits a couple of genes, uh, ac one and GAC, uh, which are associated with this process of uh, viral entry into the cell. And the drug that he discovered, baricitinib, inhibits two genes uh, which are involved with this process of endocytosis, the means by which the virus enters the cell. In addition, and uniquely, baricitinib is also involved in dampening down the inflammatory response uh, the patients suffer uh, to when the disease gets very serious. And in fact, it's the uh, respiratory syndrome caused by an overactive inflammatory response that proves to be lethal uh, in patients. And so that gave good evidence to indicate that baricitinib uh, could be a useful treatment for people uh, with serious cases of COVID-19. And I can tell you a little bit more about what happened next in our story. So by February, um, a week or so after um, Peter had done his investigation on the graph, we published our findings in a British medical journal, The Lancet. And we also pledged to share our further research um, with the uh, open community. And since then, we've published two further papers on the topic. By March, groups of doctors in Italy had read our work and they'd started dosing um, a uh, small group of patients with baricitinib. And these result, uh, resulted in early anecdotal positive outcomes. By April, uh, the owner of baricitinib, the developer, uh, Eli Lilly, um, who we'd been working with, uh, arranged uh, an agreement with the National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Diseases in the US to start a the first large randomized clinical trial, which is now underway. And in between times, further trials in Italy are showing positive results as well. And so we don't know what's going to happen with baricitinib. We'll find that out over the coming weeks and months. Um, but what we can do is you can share some learnings uh, that we've taken along the way. The first is that uh, for any technology product, that partnership between domain experts and technologists really is key, not only in using the tool together or defining it, but building it as well. And the ability for us to speak the same language uh, as each other as well. I'm able to stumble over a little bit of the science, and indeed some of our drug discoverers are also able to execute queries on our data. And that, that combination really leads to, to results that are better than we could otherwise achieve if we were considering them as silos. Being able to run on a scalable platform like AWS allows us to do experiments that we couldn't otherwise do. It allows us to change the assumptions that we make and it allows us to do all of that without jeopardizing our day-to-day our -day production work. Um, and that's really important when we want to try out new things, particularly when those things arise as suddenly uh, as COVID-19 did. Any new technology that's built, um, such as that by Benevolent and elsewhere, uh, brings new opportunities. Um, and they provide us new uh, ways of trying out ideas in ways that weren't necessarily expected or anticipated. And the culture of the company where you can drop everything and try out some new ideas is a very powerful one. And finally, we don't know whether baricitinib makes a difference uh, enough in order to be an effective treatment for COVID-19. 
Um, but as I referred to at the beginning of this presentation, uh, the process of drug discovery is extremely long. And some things that might have seemed impossible uh, not very long ago are possible in terms of coming up with new treatments. And indeed, the technology that allows us to explore the scientific literature and the wealth of information in, in our domain, biomedicine, and possibly in yours, was probably impossible a few years ago and is now much more possible than it was before. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, my name is Oli Exler. Please uh, follow us at www.benevolentai or follow us on Twitter. Thank you for your time.